If you're in the market for a used CPU, then you have come to the right place because today I'm gonna to be picking my top seven used CPUs for the money in today's video. Now, they're going to be in no particular order because with all the options out there, it's sort of like a field of different strokes for different folks. Depending on what your needs are, different CPUs may suit different people better than others. And also one good thing is with the release of the new Zen 2 CPUs, that has really brought the prices down of U CPUs because the Ryzen 5 3600, for example, is pretty much the new benchmark in terms of price performance on the new market. Six cores, 12 threads, great IPC, great power efficiency, seven nanometer, comes with a cooler, but with that aside, let's go through the top seven picks that the Yes has hand selected for you guys. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And as we said in the intro, these are in no particular order and they're also available on AliExpress and eBay in pretty big quantities. So you're not going to miss out. And that's generally how I'm doing some of these top five and top, in this case, top seven CPU picks. Of course, if you can find a deal locally, as I always say here on the channel, go get yourself a local deal, which is generally going to be better than today's deals. But at the same time, even locally where I am, where I'm used to getting really good deals, it's actually a bit of a drought at the moment. So I've been buying some of these CPUs for myself. And without a side, let's talk about the CPU that I've been buying quite a few of. And this is the X3450 Xeon. This is coming in at just over 14 bucks, four cores, eight threads. It's overclockable. And since me personally, I picked up some really cheap H55 motherboards when I was in Taiwan for $10 a pop roughly, this makes a great combo if you want to get into PC gaming and couple it with an RX 570. Though you will want to overclock this CPU if you get it to get the most out of it. So I do recommend getting a decent cooler. If you're going to be getting this stuff off AliExpress, then a good cooler I know of in terms of bang for buck is the Snowman coming in a roughly $16 shipped. It's going to do a fine job of overclocking this CPU. And in fact, this cooler for pretty much all the CPUs I've listed here today will be a great choice. Next up in the list, we have the Ryzen 5 1400. Four cores, eight threads, and out of the box, it turbos up to 3.2 gigahertz on all cores. This is coming in at 65 bucks. So a little bit more expensive than the Xeon, but of course, you've got that newer instruction set on board, especially something like AVX2. You can couple it with an A320 motherboard or a B450, for example, and have a better upgrade path, or in fact, you've got an upgrade path, where as opposed to the Xeons that I'm listing here, you won't have an upgrade path. You've also got USB 3 and some other newer features on board. And in most cases, you'll have NVMe SSD support on your motherboard too. And in the future, you could upgrade to something like a Ryzen 5 3600. So something like this makes a lot of sense for someone who wants to pay a little bit more now, but also have some options if they wish to upgrade in the future. In terms of gaming performance, getting one of these and coupling it with, again, one of my favorite picks in the used market, an RX 570, you're gonna get some great gaming performance for your dollar. Now, coupled with the fact that DDR4 RAM prices are actually pretty good at the moment, and this is what I've been saying to a lot of people, I'd buy a PC, especially if you wanna get into the market right now, while DDR4 RAM prices are low. Who knows how long these prices are going to stay low for, as we've seen in the history of DDR pricing, they constantly go up and down like a yo-yo. Now this CPU does represent excellent value for money at its price point. Though if you wanna pay a little bit more, you can get a race stealth cooler. Though me personally, I'd still be going with that snowman cooler because you can actually overclock the Ryzen 5 1400 and get even more performance out of it. I would say you could expect on a decent B350 or a decent B450 motherboard, around about 3.8 gigahertz all cores, no problems. Though next up in the list, continuing on with Ryzen, is the 2200G. This is coming in at $64, and it's got four cores, four threads, and it comes in with a 3.5 gigahertz base all core clock. Now the difference between this and the Ryzen 5 1400 is you've got less threads, you're saving a dollar, but you've also got a GPU portion on board this chip. This means you're able to play games at 720p, and if all you need is a low powered gaming rig to play some popular easy to play titles and still just like the Ryzen 5 1400 have a good upgrade path then this APU is actually a really good choice at its current price point. 
Though of course, if you know that you're going to be getting a dedicated GPU, then definitely pick the Ryzen 5 1400 over this CPU, since even though it's a 2200G, you may think it's Ryzen second generation, but it actually carries the same CPU cores as the Ryzen 5 1400, and that's the first generation CPU cores. Meaning in the case of both these chips, you're trading hyper-threading for an onboard APU and vice versa. So if you're going to pick one of these two, get which suits you best. Next up here is one of my favorites of the bunch. And I've got one of these in the studio. I've been starting to run some tests on it and Phil's Computer Labs has done an excellent video on this chip. This is the E52689. It was actually an OEM chip for system builders, but you get eight cores, 16 threads of Sandy Bridge architecture for $48 delivered. And the good thing about these eight cores, 16 threads is they turbo all the way up to 3.3 gigahertz on all cores. And you can couple it with a cheap X79 board that doesn't have to be a very good brand name since this chip won't juice a whole lot of power and you won't need to do overclocking with this particular chip. Now for the cooler, of course, that snowman is going to be a great investment to couple with this chip as well as all the other chips here because you can still use that for any future build you do. And of course, extract excellent value for money out of it at this point in time. In terms of gaming performance, coupling this with an RX 570, 580, again, is going to cause you no problems whatsoever. You may wish to even step it up to a GTX 1660, which will be absolutely fine with these eight cores, 16 threads. Though some of the drawbacks to the older Xeons is that they sometimes don't support things like USB 3 from the motherboard. And in the case of any Xeon Pre V3, they might not support things like VR, as well as the AVX2 instruction set. Though a lot of games coming out still are absolutely fine with these CPUs. And in terms of raw price performance, they represent excellent value. Take for instance, the next example we're gonna pull up here. This is the X5670. It's coming in at $18. And for this price, you get six cores, 12 threads, and they're overclockable. But I did save this to one of the last CPUs because X58 motherboards, especially good ones, are becoming very, very hard to get. A lot of sellers wanna overcharge for the motherboards, but that being said, if you can still find a motherboard on a local deal where someone's getting rid of a PC with an i7-920 and it's got a decent X58 motherboard in it, you can put this six core, 12 threaded beast into your machine, overclock it, and you'll get phenomenal gaming performance, even coupling it with the likes of GTX 1070s, 1070 Ti's, and not notice any difference against the latest and greatest processor. Though in regards to X58 motherboards that are up for sale that are brand new, stuff like the Wannan boards, I wouldn't recommend these because you do need a strong VRM and a strong motherboard with good BIOS features in my opinion to overclock the X5670s. And since you will want to overclock it to extract the most performance out of it, going with a solid board, for instance, an ASUS or an ASRock or an MSI or a Gigabyte board is recommended on these chips. The coming in last is one of the budget of budget choices. This is the E5 2420V2. It's a $16 CPU, turbos up to 2.5 gigahertz on six cores, 12 threads, and the motherboards are really cheap. You can usually get them for around $50 and couple that with some cheap server memory, ECC DDR3, and you got yourself one really cheap combo. Now in terms of coupling it with a snowman, you don't even have to go there. You can get a really budget cooler since this thing doesn't use much power at all. And coupled with something like an RX 570, it will give you decent gaming performance. So it's an excellent little budget combo for people who just wanna play games. I've tested this CPU in the past and I like what I saw. If you wanna see the video for that, I'll put the link up here for you guys. Now in closing out this video, I will say prices are getting better and better on used hardware. And of course, that's the thank to the newest Zen 2 CPUs. I say props to AMD to keep bringing this competition to the market because it brings down the price of used stuff and getting into PC gaming has honestly never been a better time. We've got a GPU mining free zone at the moment where miners aren't picking up GPUs and raising the prices of things. We've got DDR4 memory down to pretty much historical lows, which is great news as well. And that then passes on to the used CPUs and DDR3 prices. It's never been a better time to build a gaming PC, in my opinion, whether you wanna go on the used or new Ryzen route, or you wanna go on the older Xeon route. It's going to be good price performance whichever path you pick. And with that aside, I hope you guys 
enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. Also, I'll put some links in the description below, as well as some combos and things to go with each CPU and a recommended GPU. Something like a little guide to balance out each of these combos so you can extract the most value. And that's the thing with PC gaming, you always want to find a balance so you can get the best value. That is, if you're looking for value. Though one thing before I get on out of here, I did stumble across this Xeon. It was the E5 2697V3. Now it's a 14 core and it turbos up to 3.1 gigahertz on all cores. Once upon a time, this Xeon was really expensive. And $299, it certainly is a decent price. But at this money, the Zen 2 CPUs, especially something like the 3900X at $500, is really making Xeons like this look like they're not such good value for money, even at their current price points. And that's where I wanted you guys to weigh in in the comments section below. What do you think of these higher core count Xeons now that used to be ridiculously expensive? I think it's a good thing that Zen 2 is bringing competition to the market. I wanna see them drop even lower so we could do some cool stuff with them. But also let us know what you think of today's picks as well as your own best CPUs for the money. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.